the ordinance declared that the first floor lobby of City Hall would be open to any member of the public for as long as they want, during business hours, as long as they don't cause disruptions. After being deferred more than half a dozen times, it eventually passed 5-2. to two. But Mayor David Condon has now vetoed it, citing three reasons. The first, he claims it's redundant. The ordinance was first proposed when signs went up limiting time in the lobby to an hour. But those signs were removed almost as soon as Burke brought up the idea in the first place. City Hall, as you can see, is open to the public. We have meetings all the time. We have the 311 counter for all customer service, the police ombudsman. Burke in the past has said it's not redundant because it prevents signs like that from ever going up again. Condon also says that the ordinance may send out confusing signals. We don't want to send out a message to those uh, that are seeking services, um, especially those that may be experiencing homelessness, that we have those sorts of services inside City Hall. He also said the ordinance doesn't include a fiscal impact statement. The impact was also a concern to the union representing City Hall workers. Those concerns are what caused all the deferments. Now, Councilwoman Burke is working on overriding the mayor's veto. In a statement, she said in part, it isn't at all surprising to me that the mayor has vetoed an ordinance that concerns our most vulnerable. Many of the ordinance council passes are vetoed by him. But in a rare turn of events, that attempted override vote may end up unsuccessful. When it first passed, everyone but Mike Fagan and Karen Stratton voted yes. To override a veto, you need five votes. Fagan and Stratton are likely to stay in the no column. Burke will likely stay yes. Candace Mum said she doesn't usually change her vote, but is open to argument. Brianne Begg said he hasn't made up his mind, but also has concerns about redundancy. Lori Kinnear said she's now changing her mind, citing concerns about redundancy and the impact on city workers. Council President Ben Stuckert also switching sides, citing similar concerns. Three nays on an override vote is all you need to uphold the veto. The current count stands at four.